Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to the tutorial number 23 of the series Visual Effects for Games. And today we are going to see how to create effects for the user interface, for the UI. This kind of effects require a different setup if you are working with the Unity built-in UI, which is actually a great UI, but by default particle systems don't work on the user interface. If you are using a third-party asset to create your UI, you should probably be fine but you still can learn how to create this kind of effect. Alright, so let's see how we can do this. So the first thing we want to do is actually download the Unity UI extensions, the UI particle system, this one. I left the link in the description and we can come here to download and simply download the Unity UI extensions package. Save it somewhere and import to Unity. And now we need to unselect a few things, like the editor, we don't need the editor, the examples, the scripts, we only need one script, which is the UI particle system, you can select that one, and in shaders we only need the ones that say UI particle, and then you can press import. And as you can see in my scene I have a canvas, with a render mode set to screen space overlay, and I have a button where we are going to create a particle system. I'm going to rename it to Square Glow 02. And as you can see, if I increase the start size, we notice that the particles are in the scene, but in the game nothing appears. So the trick now is to use the script we have imported. And we can add it in components right here and select UI particle system. Now there are two things you may notice. One is that it's being rendered in the game, which is good, and if you look closely, the renderer of the particle system is disabled. And now this happens because this UI particle system script is basically handling the rendering system of the particles. Now let's create a new material, rename it to something, and let's select the shader. We want to use the ones we imported in the UI extensions. As you can see, these shaders are the same as these ones, but the new shaders allows to render in Unity UI default system, which is awesome. So let's select the additive one. I'm going to add this texture, but I'm going to show you in a moment how we can create something similar. Let's go over to our particle system and down here in script we want to add the new material. And cool, it's rendering, it's working. So let's make this button glow. We can turn off the shape and in the mission we want 1 in the rate over time. We don't want any start speed, this is not going to move. The duration is going to be 3 seconds, as well as the start lifetime. Let's turn on pre-warm and loop. Let's turn on color over lifetime, so it can fade in and fade out. And we want something similar to these gradients. And by the way, if you don't know, the keys on top controls the opacity. Alright, now it's starting to look like it's glowing. Let's set the max particle to 1. And now we have a small problem, because if we want to adjust the size of this texture, normally we would use the 3D start size. But as you can see, it doesn't work. And the way to fix this is to use the scale of the particle system, as you can see. So let's increase it a little bit until it covers the button. Let's give it some start color. Let's select an orange and a reddish orange. Now let's create a new texture and I'm going to use Photoshop. You can use another software, that's fine. We are going to create something similar to this. Let's create a new file with 500 by 500 in the wide and the head. Let's paint the background to black. Create a new layer with Ctrl Shift N. And down here we want to select the rounded rectangle tool. Let's create a rectangle. Let's set the fill to white. We can center this by selecting both layers, pressing V, and now we can align this to the center, just like this. Let's just rasterize this rounded rectangle by pressing right click. Cool, now let's double click in this layer, and we want to turn on outer glow. Increase the size, just like this, to around 70 or more. Alright, this is looking good, now let's just erase these hard edges with the erase tool, like this. And this is looking strange because the spread is not zero, the spread has to be zero. 
all right? And now with the smudge tool, with a strand of around 30, 40, we can start creating some spikes like this. Let's crop this, hide the black background and export this to Unity. Once in Unity, let's drag this to the material we have already created, just like this. And as you can see, I've added the new texture to the material, but the particle system doesn't update, which is very odd. And to fix this, you need to go back to the UI particle system and reassign the material again. Alright, just like this. I'm just going to create a prefab now. And now what we actually have to do is create an empty and add the square glow to that empty. So we create a new empty and add the square glow to hit and let's create another particle system which is going to be some particles. And let's go to shape and select the box which is really cool because now we can make the box fit the button just like this. Let's change the emit from to edge. Let's also add the UI particle system script and let's drag the beam01 UI material. Which in case you don't have a texture like this one, you can quickly create one in your image editing software by using the brush and going from a big size to a smaller size like this. And that's it. Once you have done that, we can set a random start size between 5 and 25 more or less like this. Let's set a random start life between 0.8 and 1.6 and I'm just going to copy and paste the start colors from square glow to these particles like this. Now let's activate color over lifetime and create a gradient similar to this one and we also want some size over lifetime with this curve. We can increase the box thickness between 0.2 and 0.3 or 0.4. This is just to make sure that the part also appear almost in the center of the button. Now let's just turn velocity of a lifetime, set the space to world, and we want random values between minus 5 and 5 or even more, just so the particles move around a little bit. And that's almost it. Let's increase the rate over time in the emission to around 50, probably more if you want. And that's pretty much it. We have a nice glowing button. You can do plenty of stuff with this, it really depends on what you want to achieve. But let's just see how we can create quick effect for when we click a button. And let's say we need to collect some coins. Let's see how you can achieve that. So let's head over to Photoshop. I'm going to create a rounded rectangle. Set the stroke to white and the fill to nothing. Now let's double click the layer, some outer glow, where you can increase the size to more than 30, if you want. And now let's decrease the fill of this layer to around 20, 25, it's up to you, to create this nice glow. Alright, let's crop this down, hide the black background and export to Unity, create a new material and drag and drop the new texture we have created. Now let's create a new empty and call this visual fx click at 02. Let's add a particle system. Let's add the UI particle system script to the particle system. And we can turn off shape. We can set the rate over time to zero. Add a burst with 10 in count. And let's set the max particles to one. The start speed is zero. And the duration is one with looping turn off. The start lifetime is going to be really quick. so. 0 0.4, 0.5, it's fine. And the size is probably around 150, we are going to see in a moment. Let's also turn on color over lifetime and create a gradient similar to this one to create this effect. Let's just drag and drop our material and it's starting to look good. We only need to adjust the size of our particle system. Like this. Alright, it's looking good. We only need to turn on the size of our lifetime and select a curve similar to this one and increase the start size. Now we are starting to have a cool effect. Just going to rename this to square and let's change the start color to an orange to match the button. 
If you want to increase the color intensity of this texture, you can do it right here in the shader. Alright, cool, let's create another particle system. This one is going to be for the particles. Let's set the duration to 1, turn off looping, and set the start lifetime between 0.6 and 1.4. The start speed is going to be 0 because we are going to use velocity over lifetime. And the start size it's going to be between 5 and 25, maybe less, maybe more, we'll see in a moment. And the start rotation between 0 and 360 with 1 in randomized rotation. And the colors can be an orange and a reddish orange, which we have already used before. The emission is going to be 0, but we will have a burst between 30 and 50. And we will also use a box in the shape to match the size of the button, just like this. And we want to emit from edges. Let's just add the UI particle system script and add the same beam we have used before to the material. Alright, cool. Now in the velocity of a lifetime we can set values between 20 and minus 20 or even 40 minus 40. It depends on the impact you want to create. Now let's create a nice fade out with color of a lifetime. And we can also use size over lifetime with the same curve we have been using. Nice. Let me save this as a prefab. And now we can go to the square glow and basically duplicate the square glow and parent it to the click effect. Let's set the duration to 1, turn off the looping and the pre-warm and set the start life to 0.5. If you want you can change the texture. I'm going to use a simpler one. And then in emission we want to set the rate over time to zero and use a burst which is going to be only one particle. Alright, just like this. Now if we select these three particle systems and press play we have a, an impactful effect for when we press the collect button, which is really great. Now let me just explain you how this script works, it's really simple. Basically the script is attached to the button and I'm going to add the clicked effect we have created to the clicked visual effect in the inspector, just like this. And basically this clicked visual effect is instantiated in this function. And this function is called by the button when we click it, as you can see. So the effect is spawned in the origin, and the origin in this case is the button. And I'm going to parent to the button the visual effect. And then I'm going to destroy it after its duration. Which is really simple. Now if we press play, we can see that we have the glowing effect. Really nice. And as soon as we click it, we spawn the click of the effect we have just created. It's really cool. It has a nice impact. But now if you want to collect the coins, basically, we can see that in the button we also have a non-click call for another function. And this function basically is an enumerator which is going to iterate throughout an amount that we set in inspector and in this case it's 10. It's basically 10 coins that we are going to create. This first money script number increase color line is just to increase this counter here, basically. Nothing special and then we spawn the UI visual effects in the origin game object that we have set in the inspector. And we also parent to the origin and then we have here a line which is very important. And we are using iTwin which is extremely useful to create very simple animations with just one line. Basically what I'm saying here is that I'm going to move the visual effect to the destination with an offset and with an ease type. If we go to the inspector we have a lot of ease types and visually speaking is types is a mathematical function that may look like these ones. Extremely useful guys, I really recommend you to get iTwin, it's free in the asset store by the way. And then the last parameter is the time that it's going to take to go from the origin to the destination, which in this case is half a second. And we have the rate, the rate at which we spawn the coins. So let's see this in action, and if we press play, as soon as I click it, we have the click the effect and the coins spawning and going to the coin icon. And uh, yeah, you can do a bunch of stuff with this UI visual effect. I have created a package with some cool effects that you can get in my Patreon, link in the description. 
By the way, thanks a lot to all the patrons that have been supporting me for the last month. You guys are really great. Thanks a lot. I hope you all have enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.